Hi. Welcome, welcome. Sorry I'm late. I had dog eating all kinds of not food things. Um, uh, hi, hi, hi. All right. <clears throat> and today we're going to read both the, the reading from today's Mass and um, the Gospel from today's Mass, but it'll be a little bit um, a little bit different because this is one of those days where the, the difference in translation is, is marked. Um, in the NABRE, which is the mass translation, um, there's the word encourage. And it's repeated many times in this short seven verses in 2 Corinthians. Um, but in every other translation that I have in my house, um, the word is not encourage, it's comfort. So there's a slight difference. So when I'm reading from my version, just know that um, in the NABRE, it's, it's encourage. And we're going to talk a little bit about both. But um, so we're going to start in 2 Corinthians 1 to 7 is where we're beginning. Okay, so. Second Corinthians. Oh, let's at least start, start with the Holy Spirit prayer. Get our day under control of the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you will renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations through Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay. Alrighty. 2 Corinthians 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God that is at Corinth, with all the saints who are in the whole of Achaia. Grace to you and peace from, our, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort who comforts us in all our afflictions so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort which we ourselves are comforted by God. We have five comforts so far. For as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. If we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we suffer. Our hope is for, your for you is unshaken, for we know that as you share in our sufferings, you will also share in our comfort. So you might hear it, encouragement, um, and you might read it both ways. Um, let's go back and look a little bit at this, and then we're going to take a look at today's reading because it's the Beatitudes, and it just parallels so beautifully. So because of God's, um, look at verse three, blessed be the God and the father and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of mercies and God of all comfort. So why are we comforted? Why are we consoled? And why are we encouraged? We are all of those things because God is a God of mercy. Because of God's mercy, we are comforted. We are encouraged. We are consoled. Um, and God comes especially close to man when he suffers, right? We know that. We know that um, many, many times the, the, we grow closer to God in the hardest times of our lives. Because if we will ask, he'll be there and he'll suffer with us. Um, so we, we're going to talk about this a little bit when we talk about the Beatitudes. But a lot of times um, if we're living the Christian life, we suffer um, because of the gospel. That is, when we live a gospel life, there is soft suffering here on earth. Um, and, and we see this here. Where he is saying we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings. And then, and then he goes on to this, it's starting in verse 6. If we're afflicted, it's for your comfort and salvation. Remember, he's talking to the church. Um, if we're afflicted, it's for it's for the church's encouragement, the church's comfort and salvation. And, and that's the thing that when you have this union between Christ and the church, then we suffer for one another and Christ suffers for the church and Christ comforts. Um, so let's look at the Beatitudes. I'm going to, I'm going to read this from, um, actually, what am I doing here? I'm reading it from the Navari Bible. So 
Um, here we go. Um, so, so we're starting, we just read the Beatitudes starting at, um, in Matthew 5, starting at the beginning. Seeing the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are, those, are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger for thirst and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so men persecuted the prophets who were before you. Okay, so going back briefly, let's just think about, about what we read in, in 2 Corinthians and look at this last um, beatitude where the shift is from blessed are those to a very, very personal. Blessed are you, <clears throat> blessed are you when men revile and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. And so we look at that um, you who are suffering on Christ's account, blessed are you. So be comforted, be encouraged in, in all the ways that you, you see that you're, you feel that you are suffering on Christ's account. You see and feel how living for the gospel sets you apart from the world and it creates this tension and you live in that tension. And the, the Beatitudes set that up and they, they acknowledge that. But then there was this little part that, um, that okay, so it ends with rejoice and be glad. Um, for your reward is great in heaven. For so men persecuted the prophets who were before you. Okay, so rejoice and be glad. Be comforted, be encouraged, rejoice and be glad. So we have that. Um, but there are two things that, that I wanted to point out. Um, we talk about the Beatitudes all the time, but that, that I wanted to point out today um, because they, they struck me as I was reading and as I was, you know, doing the research. Um, and one is last week we talked a lot about countenance when we were talking about being, um, bearing Christ's image, being Christ's currency, if you will, in the world, because we bear the image of God and our countenance should reflect that. So our faces and our body language um, and, and the way we present ourselves in the world should reflect that we are images of God. Um, so, so smile, stand up straight, um, don't cross your arms in front of you and do the thing. Um, be, let your countenance reflect that. Hold the word countenance in your thoughts. Um, and I'm going to read a little bit from the Catechism because um, it, it addresses this in the Beatitudes. Ready? So, um, the, the Beatitudes depict the countenance of Jesus Christ and portray his charity. They express the vocation of the faithful associated with the glory of his passion and resurrection. They shed light on the actions and attitudes characteristic of Christian life, and they are paradoxical promises that sustain hope in the midst of tribulation. So they are true comfort. They are true encouragement, right? They proclaim the blessings and rewards already secured, however dimly, for Christ's disciples. They have begun in the, they have begun in the lives of the Virgin Mary and all the saints. So we look here at the countenance that you have, even in the midst of suffering, because you know that, um, that those rewards are already secured. And, and so sometimes we read the Beatitudes, we're like, okay, great. So now we get to do all these things, poor and mourn and meek and all, all these, these hard things um, in the world where the world is just counter to all of that. Um, but then we get heaven. But, but that is not entirely true here in the sense that we can be happy now. God wants our countenance to reflect a joy, a true joy now. Rejoice and be glad. Not rejoice and be glad when you get to heaven, but rejoice and be glad now. 
you can rejoice, you can be glad, you can be comforted and encouraged now. Um, the Beatitudes are a map of the route to human happiness. This is from the notes in the Navari Bible. The Beatitudes are a map of the route to human happiness. And one reason they are such a good one is that they express the dual desire that God has written on the human heart to attain true happiness on earth and eternal bliss. So God has written that on your heart. He had, so that's not a bad thing to want to be happy now. Um, the Beatitudes aren't about suffering and trudging through this life so that you can be happy in the next life. The Beatitudes are understanding that we can live a life of peaceful joy now and be happy forever in heaven and that we can find joy in our suffering if we look at it through this paradoxical lens. Um, so lots to ponder today. Prep your Bibles open either to the Beatitudes, which um, are at the beginning of Matthew 5, or to the, um, and, and actually pull all your Bibles out and see what they all say in um, the beginning of 2 Corinthians. Did they say comfort or did they say encourage? And think about how both those words really work um, to get that message across. So thanks for being with me and I'll see you tomorrow.